Hi guys. I'd like to address a popular, or perhaps actually the unpopular subject at the moment. This is the Hate Crime and Public Order brackets Scotland Act, which according to the Scottish Government website, and a post dated 11th of March, will provide greater protection for victims and communities from April 1st. It creates new stirring up of hatred offences for protected characteristics, including age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, and gender and transgender identity. Not gender identity, apparently. These extra provisions will add to the long standing stirring up racial hatred offences, which have been in place since 1986. Recent statistics show that 5,738 charges of hate crimes were reported in Scotland in 2022-2023. However, we know not all crimes will be reported. I and mean, this is just absolute garbage. These so-called offences don't protect anyone. In fact, they probably... How can, how can I put it? Uh, many years ago, back in the 1980s, a black man by the name of Winston, believe it or not, we were talking generally about subjects, and he mentioned this. I won't talk about race, but he said, "Worse the fact that if um, if I drag somebody into court, if I accuse somebody of uh, calling him names or something, drag him into court, and he's fined or whatever, is that going to stop him hating me? <laughs> no." This is um, the brainchild of odious Hamza Youssef, whatever his name is. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> let's talk about it being used to... <laughs> people saying things in their own homes. I mean, this, they, they're talking to about having a... Well, <laughs> a Stalinist... Um, I mean, anonymous reporting. I just, this is insane, totally insane. What Britain needs, Scotland and Britain, is the First Amendment. As for the United States, is there any more so-called hate crime in the United States? No. At the moment, we're seeing um, Jews on the receiving end, big time, from Islamist anti-Semites and left-wing morons. And what's being done about it? You know, I mean, they, they dragged Arnold Lease into court in 1936 for publishing a scurrilous pamphlet. Other people, Lady Burber, look at the look at the, the aggravation that poor woman suffered. Colin Jordan, uh, Nick Griffin, even, and none of these people, as far as I know, have ever used violence against any minority. And yet, you've got. Jewish properties being defaced. That was a birth certificate case. Some nine year old kid was treated like dirt in hospital. Uh, and this is this just madness. New stirring up of hatred offences. <laughs> yeah, protected characteristics. I'm wondering if if um, if this applies to people saying things about themselves. So if I refer to myself as a overweight, disabled, old uh, atheist, I mean, is that, yeah, I mean, true, <laughs> all of it's true. To contrast with this, I'd like to read something for, for you. In 19... 66. William Merrilees published his autobiography. William Merrilees was Chief Constable of Lothians and People's Constabulary uh, from 1950 to 68. He retired on his 70th birthday. And um, 
<coughs> he, at one time he was a detective in Edinburgh. <laughs> I'll just read a bit from chapter 8 of his book, Short Arm of the Law. This is the campaign against homosexuality. I'll put a link to I'll put a link to this on my, my main website. With the brothel situation cleared up, I was sent for by Mr. Adair, the procurator fiscal, who had recently and in masterly fashion handled a particularly significant blackmail case in which two women and no less than 13 men were charged with blackmailing a well-known individual cashier to a firm of solicitors and a church official. The victim was alleged had had an indecent relationship with two boys eight years earlier, not eight-year-old boys, and therefore given him money to go to Canada. Five years later, he was stopped in the street by a man who poses the brother of one of the boys, who stated that his brother was very ill in Canada. Still later, he called to say that. Uh, still later, he called to say that his brother was now dead and demanded one hundred pounds for expenses in connection with the death. This was the start of a blackmailing campaign, in which our fortunate cashier was forced to part with all his savings and began to embezzle the funds of his employer, employers. Mr. Adair told me that he was greatly concerned over the amount of homosexuality practiced in the city, which so often resulted in blackmail. He asked me if I was prepared to tackle this problem, as I had the other, the, the brothel problem. Strangely enough, the position at that time was that, though I was chief of the vice squad, homosexuality did not come into my sphere, but was dealt with by the ordinary criminal investigation department staff, CID in other words. That department was far too busy with normal crime as opposed to abnormal crime, to give this difficult problem anything like the attention it required. And uh, my explorations and inquiries soon brought to light a disgraceful and hardly believable state of affairs. Nowadays this unnatural behaviour <laughs> is fairly freely spoken of, but this is a very recent development. At the time very little was known about it, especially in view of the large numbers of people I found to be involved. Uh, 1996 was the year before Wolfenden, which decriminalised homosexuality. I discovered that there was a widespread and recognised traffic consisting, of course, of the two types of men. The effeminate sort, practically all used assumed names, usually of contemporary film actresses, or other well-known ladies such as Lillian Tashman, she's so well known I've never heard of her, Talula Bankhead, Myrna Loy, she was an artist, Countess Betsy and so on. They're also referred to as bitches, puffs, panties and white hats etc. That made the habit of frequenting public urinals known to them as cottages. <laughs> and they're... <laughs> They made a habit of frequenting public arrivals, known to them as cottages, and there solicited their clients. <laughs> as well as these places, I learned that the Colton Hall, a high open space at the end of the city, overlooking Hollywood House, that's the Scottish Parliament, was much, well, no, I don't, was, I don't know what it was then, but it is nowadays, was much favoured by these people, and I decided to investigate for myself. <laughs> the first Saturday night, I discovered that the place was indeed hotching, hotching with them, I presume that's a Scottish word, and we questioned 14 suspects, all of whom admitted that they were there for homosexual purposes. 11 of them, in fact, having come into Edinburgh on half day railway excursion tickets from areas outside the city. I mean, I mean it just uh, it goes on about a raid. <laughs> I mean, um, just the, the difference in um, attitude then. I mean, this guy will probably end up being charged with hate crimes now. <coughs> now, the police have really gone, I mean, ludicrous. And uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've discussed this publication before, but I'll, I'll put a link to it. One, one other thing I'll say is that, if I can find this, I've recently, I've been on, I can't remember the exact date, I've been on, <coughs> I've been on uh, 
on YouTube for about since about 2000, 2008 I think um, I've recently like this month been accepted for the YouTube partners program because I've run up a million plus views and most of those views are actually for two videos one about with 603,000 views over eight years and the other with 292,000 views over nine years almost all of those all but about 8,000 of them in the past year so <clears throat> I've done what's happened there but apart from that I'm utterly shadow banned so uh, I've set up a, a membership I, I did I did have a patch on at one point but I never had a single member for that I set up a membership if anyone wants to join my channel and help me spread the word um, I'm retired now and I've got I've got money to spend but not money to burn but if anyone would like to join the membership uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try to post at least once a week on this channel but I do post elsewhere on BitChute, uh, the Internet Archive I have a second channel the Full Swipe Timeline the International Full Swipe Timeline um, I'll, I'll leave the link below uh, but I would appreciate anyone if nothing else it will help bash the algorithm and, and get my videos to a wider audience uh, I'm humble enough to believe that uh, I'm entitled to a, a, a wider viewership listenership um, so anyway uh, leave your comments below and uh, stay out of Scotland.